Right now, I'll give you a thousand bucks. You want to bet UConn minus one ninety five to win a championship or Purdue at plus two hundred five? <laughs> the thing about UConn is they are inevitable. This is Sharp Money with Patrick Maher on VSIN, the sports betting network. You know how this is played. 30 second shot clock. Coin toss went to Dustin in the back. I'll judge. Mike leads four, two, and one. We'll continue with the theme that we just left off on. Dustin, is the interest spike in women's college basketball Caitlin Clark specific or is it long term? It's Caitlin Clark specific because I think when you look at the history of women's college basketball, there's always been stars. Like I'll go back. Recently, Diana Taurasi was a monster. We had Candace Parker back in the day, Shamika Coleslaw, Cheryl Swoops. I remember watching Rebecca Lobo at UConn when those runs first started, all the way back to Cheryl Miller. There's always been superstars. The difference is Clark has swag. So she's essentially John McEnroe's attitude in Steph Curry's body, and that's why everyone's into it. I agree with Dustin. I do think she's raised the the floor, though, a little bit, and there will be uh, modest gains for viewership in women's basketball, but the buzz goes with her to the WNBA. Now, can she translate that buzz to the height, to the peaks that she brought it here? Uh, I agree with them on all the counts, all those people. Cheryl Miller on down and all those great Olympians that we had. We dom- we've dominated women's basketball, you know, for 40 years and the college game still couldn't pick up any momentum. Mike Palm, what is the best sports movie of all time? It's an interesting question. I'm going to go with Chariots of Fire. Won four Oscars, 1981. It's the story of two uh, runners on the England team. One a devout Christian, one a Jew, much like this debate segment is every (laughs) week. And their interesting relationship leading up to the 1924 Olympics. It wins four Academy Awards, including Best Picture. And, of course, best score for that song as they're running along the beach. But it also takes an uh, an elegiac look at Europe between the two world wars. When I think about a sports movie, I want to feel a sense of... What's the word? Purity. I want purity here. I want something that brings me back to a simpler time, simpler life. So that's why Sandlot for me is the greatest sports movie of all time. You think about when you first fell in love with sports, you were a kid. And what you want to do? You want to play the sports, not what we're doing now. Talk about the sports. So when I look back at the, the simpler life, the community that's developed between the kids on the ball field, the brothership, story of friendship and bonding between Benny the Jet Rodriguez, befriending Timmy Smalls when he moves to town, and shout out to Wendy Peppercorn, my first real crush. Dustin, right now I'll give you a thousand bucks. You want to bet UConn minus 195 to win a championship or Purdue at <laughs> plus 205? The thing about UConn is they are inevitable. There is no weakness. They have everything that you have and then some. They are Thanos when it comes to college basketball. Uh, They have an elixir for Zach Eady should they meet Purdue. Uh, They have more perimeter threats. They have a deeper roster, Newton, Spence, Caravan. They have experience when it matters right now, and that's what Purdue lacks is they don't have experience winning the big one when it matters. The problem with UConn when you're trying to face them is any way you want it, they can play it your style, their style, and they'll do it better than you. I take the $1,000, and I'll bet it to win a little over 500 at minus 195. But I'm going to come back with you with Purdue plus five in the championship game and try to find a middle here. <laughs> I agree with Dustin. UConn's the best team, hands down. And the spurtability, the spurtability is unreal. Oh, 30 to nothing on Illinois. That's all. The problem is what will be, and we'll keep this game close, is how close the officials call the game. Because you know Edie. He's going to shoot 20 free throws every time they rub up against the guy. And the, you know what? Zach Eady is a Bond villain, right? He's a cross between Jaws and Odd Job. He's a very interesting character, but that's how I'd play my thousand. Spurt ability. Mike Palm, you're up next. Stefan Diggs has been traded to the Texans. Do you like, love, or loathe the trade for the Texans? I love it. I absolutely love it. I love it for Stefan Diggs as well. I think he wears out his welcome pretty quickly in places. He's a pretty strange dude. Diva, if you want to say, uh, wherever he's been, including college, he wears thin on people. So I think a fresh start for him it, with a young team, with an up-and-coming quarterback, a coach that should have won coach of the year, a team clearly on the rise. I think turning the page on a fresh start is good for everybody involved here, including the Bills. I think this is win, win, and win. I like... I don't love, I don't love, loathe, 
I think there is a chance you can get a window with Stefan Diggs on his best behavior trying to prove we're all wrong with what we're saying about him playing his best football with C.J. Stroud. And I think because of all the other pieces around what the Texans have done, it will be a transition for a lot of people, so he won't be alone in that regard. He'll have people to relate to on the roster. And I just think they've gotten so much better as a team. Winning can cure what ails you for a little bit with Stephon Diggs. Dustin Swedelson, you could own a team in any league. What league and what team? Yeah, it's easy. It's a Major League Baseball, and I would own the Atlanta Braves. And it's not because why you think. So one time I got to talk to Fred McGriff on the phone. And the first thing I said to him, I said, you ruined my childhood. The Atlanta Braves ruined my childhood as a Mets fan. I hate them. They are the model ball club. They do everything right. So with the way Rob Manfred has Major League Baseball ownership situated right now, no matter what you do, you will make money selling your team down the road. So I would basically take over the Braves and ruin them to the point where they're set back 20 years. And then I'll make money on my investment when I sell them. Patrick, there's two reasons why I would own the Dallas Cowboys. Number one, they're the most valuable team in all of sports. So put that $9.5 billion in my pocket. But the other reason is the Cowboys are much like Notre Dame, where no matter where you go in this country, they are going to be fans of that team. So wherever you travel, you'll be beloved. You're the owner of the Cowboys. You'll be one of the most popular people in America. The most hated athlete, Mike Palm, in your lifetime is fill in the blank. I'm going to say O.J. Simpson. Um, <laughs> because I think he drew the most eyes and the most ire of getting away with murder. I mean, even, uh, I don't know that the people on that jury don't think he didn't do it. Whether they thought the police mishandled everything. I mean, it was bungled prosecution. It was a sham. And then from going on from there and getting a new lease on life, all he's done is got himself into trouble, being involved in these cons with the autograph stuff, armed robbery and all that. Totally despicable, most hated. So I went with a guy that I was, it was the one I hated the most. And I think a lot of people outside of the area I grew up in hated him, and that's Derek Jeter. I hated Derek Jeter. I couldn't stand him. I thought when you watched him play, it was so annoying how he was always in the right place at the right time, obviously, that big play against the A's. So many key moments where he'd come up with a hit, but you'd watch him over the course of the season, you'd be like, I don't think he's that good. I don't think he's that special of a shortstop. He doesn't hit for power when everyone's mashing the ball. I hated Derek Jeter because he was cool. He always did the right thing. He was always above it. You never caught him on his heels or napping. And always had the best broads, too. <laughs> <laughs> true. It's true. It's true. Dustin, outside of sports betting, what's your favorite part about living in Las Vegas? So, these two kind of run together. It's that it's a 24-hour town in the food. Meaning, and obviously look at me. When I moved here, it was 287 pounds. 287 pounds. We weighed in today at 350 on the dot. That lets you know, and by the way, I've lost weight. So that lets you know how good the food is here. Any type of food, any time of day, it is available here. And it's as, it's as good as any major world city there is. I agree with Dustin, but I'll say 24 hours. 24 hours people don't get. You know, I went to San Diego with my wife on a trip, and we want to have dinner at 9 o'clock. And people are like, you crazy? Our last seating was at 830. I mean, they're closing down. <laughs> yeah. They're busting people up. It, it, it's, it's a lifestyle. Then I will say the entertainment. Um, that there are so many of the top-level entertainers, one, that have residencies here, and then all the shows, all the top shows come through here on their tours as well. So you are, have such access to the best entertainment in the world. Mike Palm, better actor, Tom Hanks or Tom Cruise? I don't think this is particularly close because I don't think much of Tom Hanks. When I think of Tom Hanks, I think of Bosom Buddies with Peter Scolari. Oh, my God. I think of the money pit with Shelly. Go force yourself through that two hours of the money pit. And when I think of Tom Cruise, although I'm not a fan of the action movies, A Few Good Men, a tremendous role. How about the risky business? This is a slam dunk for me. We got to talk about how deep it goes. The depth chart that Tom Hanks is working with murders Tom Cruise, who's making like the 17th Mission Impossible movie where he's jumping out of something without a parachute to show you he's not scared of death. Well, he's protected by Scientology. That's why he's not scared of death. Tom Hanks, Apollo 13, <laughs> Turner and Hooch, League of Their Own, Forrest Gump, Captain Phillips, The Terminal, Castaway, You've Got Mail, Sleepless in Seattle, Toy Story, The Green Mile. His hits, they cut deeper and he goes deeper. Turner and Hooch. <laughs> Big. <laughs> And here it comes. 
Dustin's best answer so far over the past few weeks was his Caitlin Clark answer. He wins that one. Uh, best sports. Okay, the second one, Mike won. Oh, Jew and Christian. Okay, yeah, best yeah, sports yeah, movie. Yeah. Um, UConn Purdue bet. Uh, Mike won that one with the middle component. Stefan Diggs was a push boys. You could own a team. Dustin taking down the, the Braves. That was, that was good. So now we're tied two and two. Most hated athlete was a push. Vegas was a push. Dustin Sweetelson wins with the Tom Hanks answer. I'm sorry. He made me laugh with Scientology, I wrote down. And then the <laughs> litany of Tom Hanks. We forgot about Turner and Hooch. Good dog. Four, what is it? 4-3-1 four, four, three, three, or 4-3-1? 4-3-2. 4-3-2? 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-3-1. 4-